Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the second in a series of video tutorials on how to make a first person shooter in Unity 5. So this episode we're going to carry on directly from the last episode. And if you remember we went through the basics of Unity itself and we added in these couple of objects here, primarily the floor and what we will interpret as two crates. So this episode we're going to look at um, importing into Unity. We're going to look at texturing, uh, materials, and we're going to do a little bit of physics as well. So the first thing we want is to import into Unity, and we'll do that down here. So over here where it says Assets on your folder, right-click, Create, Folder. And I'm just simply going to call this folder Textures. So everything we import into Unity, which we classify as a texture, should go into this folder right here. So let's drag this texture of crate 001 straight into Unity. Give it a second just to think and import and there you go. That is now an asset within Unity. You don't have to do one at a time if you don't want to. I'm going to select these other three and drag and drop all three into Unity. And there we go, importing, and there we go. So now we have four textures in our textures folder. Uh, these textures can be found for free on our website. Our website is in the description below. So if you're struggling to find your own textures, as I say, our site is full of um, assets that you can use for free, you don't have to pay. So next thing we'll do is let's apply this crate texture here to just one of our crates. And let's see what happens. So drag and drop this texture straight onto this object and you'll notice it textures it. However, it also creates this folder here called materials. Now a texture can't directly go onto an object, only a material can go onto an object. So whenever you drag texture onto any object, it will by default create this material here. So if we were to drag this texture onto here, it wouldn't create a new one because that material already exists. Now we could modify this material, but there's no need for us to do. But I will show you how to create a material now. In this folder, material, right click, create, and then you'll notice you, you do have a massive list. You don't need to worry about much of them for now. The one you need just for now is material. So let's name this one Floor 001. Now we could drag and drop this tile texture straight onto our floor, but that wouldn't be so good. We need to drag it onto this material first, because ideally we could do with modifying it. So with this in your inspector, sorry, I should show that again. Just make sure you do have this selected, this material. Don't click off it head into textures and then drag this tile texture over here onto this top square here and it will apply that texture as you can see to the material. Now I'm not going to play around too much with the settings because uh, the way we have it set at the moment is pretty much how we would like it. We just need to kind of do the tiling. So, for example, if I was to drag and drop this here, you can see, if we zoom out, let's double click here, you can see that it has applied just one of these textures to an entire object, and that looks way too big. So if we go to it, and let's change the tiling, so let's change it to the same size as our object. If you remember, we did 100 by 100. So let's change the tiling to 100 by 100. Let's zoom back in. And there we can see it has actually made a proper tiling effect. It actually looks like the uh, texture that we imported, except better. So we have these other two textures. I don't think we'll use them in this tutorial, but 
Uh, we, we will be using them in the next tutorial because we're going to obviously put some walls in eventually. So I think it's now time to have a little play around with maybe a little bit of physics. By all means, if you don't want to use these textures, you can have a look on Google. Ideally, you need to look for something called seamless textures, as that makes the texture and material flow quite neatly if you're doing this to your floor. And you have to remember, Unity is not a modeling app, uh, well, program, studio, whatever you want to call it. It's not for modeling. It is just for game development. I am going to try and do as much as I can without modeling. There may be questions about performance. Is it too much of too many objects? Don't worry. Generally, for beginners, uh, doing it all this way is good practice. And we will be using models. Don't get me wrong. We will be using models. In fact, I think the next episode we'll be using a, a gun, which is a model, but I'll go into that next episode. So let's do some uh, physics. So let's go into our first crate and let's go to the inspector and you'll have a few different options here. You've got a mesh filter, box collider, mesh renderer. You don't need to worry about much of them. The one I'm going to go to this is box collider. Now a collider stops your player kind of running through the box. So kind of glitching through the box if you will. So you'll notice if I zoom in there is a green line surrounding our box just here. That is the collider. So for example if we were to change it and make it larger you would see the green line extends outwards making the collider area much bigger than the object itself. So having a size of one by one by one makes it the exact same size as the object. Now if we were to say what, let's set our camera up first. Our camera, you can see a quick scene view there. So I'm just going to show you something. If you were, for example, to drag this crate up into the air and then press play, by pressing play, you go to your game view and you can actually physically play. You will see that the box itself is just hanging in the air. There's no physics attached to it. To attach physics, click on your object add component, go to physics, and then at the very top you'll have something called rigid body. Rigid body does create sort of simple physics within your game. So just by adding it, by default it comes with use gravity as ticked. So this crate would now theoretically come crashing down to earth if we press play. And it does. So that's now created physics for this crate. Now if we had our player in there, our player will be able to push this object around. But I'm not going to go into too much detail with all this. You can have a bit of fun playing with the uh, numbers here. So let's put this as, uh, I tell you what, let's actually manually put this in as five. You can also drag using a slider next to it. It is kind of invisible. But if you put your mouse there and drag along, you can change the uh, uh, the numbers. So you can see by increasing this drag, it kind of slows down the gravity, it drags it a little. So if we double that to 10, it should fall even slower, kind of in slow motion. So let's set this back to it's a default setting of zero, so it has no drag. And once again, press play. It would do that. So just to recap on that, when you press play, it renders everything that you have in your scene view. So if you have scripts attached to any of your objects, it will run them at the same time. So I'm hoping now I'm zooming out, and this crate I'm actually going to place on the y-axis as let's say 100 so as it is kind of quite high in the sky so when we press play give it a couple of seconds we should see it come falling down and you notice as it fell then it kind of wobbled a bit when it landed again that is the physics so let's bring this back to um, let's bring it to 10 let's zoom in and I'm going to rotate now to see what happens when it falls when we rotate. So let's rotate it kind of this way or that way. So we need to go on the Z or Z 
axis. So let's put that as 45. And now let's press play to render. It kind of gets stuck. So let's change it to, I don't know, a good number, 20. Hopefully it should fall. There we go. There's the physics right there. So having it on a, an angle of 45, because it's such a perfect angle, it kind of makes it balance perfectly on its side like that, which is kind of glitchy, but it's kind of funny. And I'm hoping if we were to actually change it just a little bit less, maybe to 40, it wouldn't quite balance so much and it would collapse down. So now let's put that back to zero. Let's put it back on our floor by putting 1.5. That should bring it back down. Yes. Okay, one last thing we'll do. You'll notice that we actually are working on the box on the uh, left hand side. However, when we press play, it's doing it on the right hand side. Reason for that is the main camera. Our main camera is currently looking this way at our scene, whereas we were looking the other way. So rather than move the camera for now, well the camera will be um, deleted in the next episode when we go further into it, but for now let's keep it there and let's quickly recap. If we drag up our right side box, then the right side will fall because we've switched our sides. There. So back to the ground, uh, let's head to our other crate and again if you remember add component, physics, rigid body. We're not going to add a rigid body to floor because that would be at the moment kind of silly. But there are options to add physics to your floor without it going a, a bit funny. So if you were to add it now it would just make the floor fall forever. So we'll leave that episode there for now. Um, as I say, these textures are free on our website if you head over there. Um, sure, it's still not looking quite like a first person shooter. However, the next episode we'll start, um, we'll put in our first person character. Uh, we'll also put in our gun, we'll play a bit more with textures, we'll create some walls, and then it will start looking like a first person shooter. You have to remember, game development takes a while. You could be making a game and even for the first couple of hours it looks nothing like the game you're aiming for. Hopefully, as I say in the next episode, it will start to look like a shooting game. So, uh, until the next episode, remember we're on Facebook, head over there, we're on Twitter. Uh, if you've got any comments, any questions, anything like that, you can just leave them in the comments below and, well, we'll hope we can get back to you. So thank you very much for watching.